While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, we're going to talk about the nomenclature of cyclic alkanes. And we're going to see it doesn't differ very much from the IUPAC system that we've been using for non-cyclical alkanes. So let's start here with step one. Here we find the longest chain of carbons that make up a ring. So for this particular molecule, that would be this ring right here. And that ring happens to have six carbons. So the parent name of this molecule is going to be cyclohexane. Hex for six, A and E ending for alkane, and cyclo because it's a ring. Now we're ready for step two. Here we want to number the carbons correctly, but we want the same thing that we saw before, which is we want low branching numbers. So to make the numbers low, we should start carbon one on one of the branches here. Let's call this carbon one here. And at this point, we can start numbering counterclockwise or clockwise. But again, remember, we want low branch or substituent numbers, so we should number clockwise so the next branch will be on carbon two. So that means the rest of the carbon numbers would be this right here, three, four, five, and six. Now we're ready for step three. Let's circle and label all of our substituents. Notice we got a methyl right here and the methyl right here. Which brings us to step four. We're ready to put all of this into the name. So we would call this one comma two dash dimethyl cyclohexane. So notice very similar to what we've been doing before. Let's look at a sample problem here. Name this following molecule. Let's start with step one here. We notice that we do have a ring in our molecule. So let's find the biggest ring in the molecule and that of course is this central part right here. You should count five carbons within that red box, making the parent name cyclopentane. For step two, we want to correctly number these carbons. The question is, where is our carbon one? Well, think about it. We should make this carbon one, because that carbon happens to have two branch points. And because the next branch point is right here, we would want to number in the clockwise direction again to get low substituent or branch numbers. So that means this would be carbon two, three, four, and five. Notice if you number the counterclockwise direction, then the substituent on carbon three here would actually be on carbon four instead. So that's why we want to number this clockwise. Now let's do step three here. Labeling our substituents, notice we have the two methyls here and this is an isopropyl group right here. We're now ready for the last step. Let's put all of this into the name, but notice I in the isopropyl comes before M, so we should list him first. So this would be three isopropyl, one comma one dimethyl cyclopentane. Now look at this sample problem here. What if you have a ring in your structure but it's not the biggest part of your structure. Let me show you how to handle this. Let's look at step one. Since the ring is not the biggest part of this molecule, then this long chain right here becomes the main show. He's going to define the parent name of this molecule. So sometimes we have to decide who's going to be the main show and who's going to be the substituents in a molecule. If there was a case here where the ring was bigger than the chain, then the ring would become the main show and the chain would become the substituent. So let's finish this off. In the box, you should count seven carbons. That makes the parent name of this molecule heptane. Moving on here to step two, let's correctly number these carbons. Notice to get small branch numbers, we should number from left to right. So this would be carbon one here. This would be carbon two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We're now ready for step three. Let's circle and label our substituents. And notice what's happening here. We're getting a ring as a substituent, but let's take care of the top one. That's easy. He's just a methyl substituent. 
And for the ring substituent here, think about it. If he were just a ring by himself, he would be cyclopropane because he's made up of three carbons. But since in this case he's playing the role as a substituent, we change his A-N-E ending to Y-L. So now he's called cyclopropyl. That sets us up here for step four. Let's put the name together here. Notice the cyclo C goes before the methyl M. So we would put first two cyclopropyl dash three methyl heptane. Let's look at another example here. What if your molecule has two rings in it? Well, for step one here, we should choose the bigger ring as our main show and anything else substituent. So this means the five-membered ring here is going to define the parent name of this molecule, which happens to be cyclopentane. Now for step two here, we want to correctly number our carbons. Now this one takes a little more thought than the other ones. Like for instance, you can call this your carbon one right here. And if you number this counterclockwise, the three-membered ring substituent would be on carbon three. And in this case, you would get substituent numbers one and three. But notice, if you didn't call this carbon in the ring here with the chlorine number one, and instead called the carbon with the three-membered ring carbon one, that means the carbon that bears the Cl in the ring would be carbon three, and you would still get a one three substitution here. So that begs the question, which one is going to be really the carbon one? Does it matter? Could we make it either or? The answer is no. You have to make the right decision here. So what you do in this situation to define who's going to be the real carbon number one is you have to go by the alphabet, which means one of the substituents here is chlorine, which would be CH, and the other substituent is cyclopropyl CY. That means chlorine goes before cyclopropyl, so that's what defines who is carbon one, which means this ends up being the official carbon one. And again, we know this by looking at both substituents and seeing which one would come alphabetically first. So let's put the rest of the numbers here on our ring. This is two, three, four, and five. We're now ready for step three, which is kind of already done for us here. So let's move on to step four. Let's construct this name. Again, chloro comes before cyclopropyl, so we'll put him in the name first, which gives us one chloro and a three cyclopropyl cyclopentane. Now, there's a certain aspect here concerning nomenclature of rings that we have to know. For instance, let's say you have a four-membered ring, and here I'm going to try to show it three-dimensionally here, like this. And remember, if each carbon in this ring makes four bonds, then two of the bonds are within the ring, and that leads two other bonds to make a total of four. So for instance, let's say the top right corner carbon has these two additional bonds right here. Notice I have a methyl and I have a hydrogen. If you were to look at the actual structure of a ring, you would notice the ring almost acts as a table here. And what we observe here is that that methyl would be technically above the table, and the hydrogen you see there would be below the table. We're going to see later on in another online lecture that the actual structure is slightly different from this, but what still remains is that the methyl would be above and the H would be below. So let me fill in the rest of the bonds on this ring. Let's say this carbon also has a methyl above and an H below and the rest of the carbons, let's just put hydrogens on them. And again, one would be above and one would be below. Now, there's something else I want you to notice here. For this particular case, the methyls are on the same side of the ring. That's a very important structural detail. And we're going to see it goes into the name of this molecule. So for instance, let's name this molecule. The biggest ring in it is four carbons. So his parent name is cyclobutane. Numbering the carbons correctly here, we would call this carbon one, and we'd call this carbon two. So therefore, his name so far is 1,2-dimethylcyclobutane. Now, because the methyls here are again on the same side of the ring, 
we have to place that into the name of the molecule. So what we add to the front of this is the term cis. And think of cis as same. So the real name of this molecule is cis-1,2-dimethylcyclobutane. The reason why this is important is because here's another version of this molecule right here. Notice for this molecule, the methyl is up above here, and this methyl is below the ring here. If you were to name this molecule, notice they would have the same general name here in the sense of 1,2-dimethylcyclobutane. But since the methyls are not on the same side, we express that as trans. Trans simply means across, and these methyls are technically across from each other. So think of trans as opposite sides of the ring. We're going to see later on that these two molecules do not react the same, which means they are technically different molecules. And the way the IUPAC system has to work is that every unique molecule has a unique name. So that's why we need the terms cis and trans to distinguish these molecules from each other. Now let me show you one more sample problem here. Watch what happens in this case and watch out for this. If you wanted to name this molecule and you went through all the steps, you would start here with step one and notice that this six-membered ring is the largest ring of the molecule, which would make his parent name cyclohexane. And when it came to step two here, of course, this would be carbon one because that's the only branch point or substituent. So that means the rest of the carbon numbers here would be two, three, four, five, and six. Working our way to step three here, this is the only substituent. We label him as, of course, methyl, which then brings us to step four here. You would think to put one methyl cyclohexane. But what I'd like you to know here is that the one is actually incorrect. We're going to see that this is redundant, and the real name of this molecule is just methyl cyclohexane. Now, why is that so? Let's go back to the original molecule here. The reason why the one is redundant is because technically there's no such thing as 2-methylcyclohexane. And let me prove that to you here. Remember, when you numbered the carbons this way, you did this because, of course, you wanted the methyl on carbon 1. But let's say we move the methyl to over here, and this was the original molecule. Would you call this molecule 2-methylcyclohexane? The answer is no, of course, because if that methyl is on that carbon, then this becomes the new way of numbering the ring. The methyl is again back on carbon 1. So that's why the 1 is redundant, because again, there's simply no such thing as 2-methylcyclohexane, just like there's no such thing as 3-methyl-4 or even 5-6-methylcyclohexane. So that's why we just call this molecule methylhexane. In other words, it's enough information for us to generate the structure of this compound from the name.